Saudi Arabia, known for its scorching temperatures and arid deserts, is experiencing an unprecedented transformation. Heavy rainfall in recent weeks has triggered a startling discovery that has left scientists baffled. The country's once barren landscape is undergoing a remarkable metamorphosis, one that could change the way we think about this Western Asian nation forever. If you're curious about what's happening in Saudi Arabia and how it's affecting the environment, stick around till the end of this video to uncover the mind-bending truth. With a total landmass of around 2.15 million square kilometers, the Middle Eastern nation of Saudi Arabia is one of the world's largest countries. It is the most populous nation in the Arabian Peninsula and the 13th most populous nation on the entire planet. This country is neighbored by Jordan, Iraq, Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, Oman, and Yemen. The United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, and Qatar are also on their border. The majority of Saudi Arabia is covered in a desert environment, which features extensive stretches of rocky outcrops and dunes. The country has a long coastline that runs along both the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf to the west and the east, respectively. The coastline of the Red Sea is defined by its steep mountains, whereas the coastline of the Gulf of Mexico is characterized by its large tidal flats and marshes. The Saudi Minister of Environment, Water and Agriculture, Abdul Rahman Al Fadli, gave his approval to a development plan in the plant resources sector and greenhouses, which calls for new investments with a total value of $1.06 billion until the year 2025. The plan is being developed in conjunction with the necessary authorities and companies from the private sector, with the overarching objective of increasing production capacity by promoting the implementation of cutting-edge technology in the agricultural sector. Fad Lee, the chairman of the board of directors of the Agricultural Development Fund, has confirmed that the plan that has been approved for the years 2023 to 2025 will contribute to additional productivity that is estimated to be 430,000 tons bringing the total production capacity of the greenhouses to more than 1 million tons annually. According to him, the goals of the initiative are to promote national food security, increase the contribution of local content, and give job opportunities to the objectives of Vision 2030. The minister explained how the expansion plan would extend the unrestricted support that the Saudi government already provides to the agricultural sector. He also mentioned that the value of the fund's loans to productive sectors for 2022 exceeded around $1.3 billion. Because agriculture is such an important component of Saudi Arabia's overall food security system, the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries devised this plan in an effort to improve the effectiveness of this crucial industry, while also working toward the sector's growth and long-term viability. It is important to note that preparations for the growth plan in greenhouses equipped with the most recent technologies began sooner than originally planned. This method of production has been employed in Saudi Arabia for more than three decades. Greenhouses are widely recognized as an essential component to the success of specialized agricultural production, such as organic farming, because of their ability to shield crops from the adverse effects of a variety of environmental conditions. The findings of the studies and research carried out by the ministry have shown that the application of the most recent technology in the field of agriculture and in greenhouses has led to a reduction in the amount of irrigation water needed by as much as 60%. In the early 1960s, Saudi Arabia was a barren desert, and only 400 square kilometers of land was considered productive for agriculture. However, through extensive investment and technology and infrastructure, the kingdom has undergone a remarkable transformation. Today, Saudi Arabia boasts a vast network of productive farmland, complete with an array of peculiar-looking fields that are specially designed to allow farmers to cultivate a diverse range of crops and fruits. This transformation is all the more remarkable when you consider the arid and hostile nature of the Saudi Arabian landscape. With temperatures that can soar above 50 degrees Celsius and an average annual rainfall of just 100 millimeters, it would seem impossible to cultivate anything but the hardiest of plants. Yet through sheer determination and innovation, Saudi Arabia has managed to turn vast swaths of desert into a lush forest. Saudi Arabia's rapid transformation from having only 400 square kilometers of arable land in the early 1960s to being able to farm 35,000 square kilometers today is an impressive achievement. However, no one seems to know precisely how this transformation was achieved so quickly. Despite the lack of knowledge about how this was accomplished, the growth of the country's agriculture sector has been exponential over the past three decades. 
This growth has been particularly remarkable, considering that Saudi Arabia is one of the driest countries in the world, with an average precipitation of only 4 inches per year. Saudi Arabia holds the most oil reserves of any country on the planet by a significant margin. At a depth of 1,440 meters, the Dammam oil field in Saudi Arabia was discovered for the first time in March of 1938. This nation is home to around 17% of the world's proven petroleum reserves, which are all found here. The cost of one liter of drinkable water in Saudi Arabia is greater than the cost of one liter of crude oil in that country. The Gawar oil field is the largest in the world, and it contains reserves of over 75 billion barrels. The reserves contained within the oil field are sufficient to fill 4 million 770,897 swimming pools of Olympic size. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is experiencing a severe water deficit. Currently, Saudi Arabia exports a wide variety of products, including wheat, dates, dairy, eggs, fish, poultry, fruits, vegetables, and flowers. In Saudi Arabia, where they were once commonly eaten, date palms are now primarily cultivated for export to aid organizations abroad. Why did this happen? The agriculture of the Arabian Peninsula consisted primarily of the cultivation of dates and small-scale vegetable production in an oasis, with the exception of a narrow strip of coastal territory in the southwest. These little farms provided the people with a reliable source of food, and any surplus was sold to the passing caravans. Agricultural Progress in the Kingdom's Early 1970s Government programs have been established to bolster modern agricultural technology and rural infrastructure. As a result, the production of all staple foods has increased dramatically. Saudi Arabia no longer needs to import any food basics because of the country's huge output of such commodities. The export of wheat, dates, dairy products and other items including eggs, fish and chicken has reduced Saudi Arabia's reliance on food imports. Due to the early program's emphasis on large dairy, meat, poultry and egg production, by 1985, local farms were already meeting domestic demand for various hitherto imported goods. These days, Saudi Arabia is home to some of the most advanced and expansive dairy farms in the Middle East. The average milk production per cow is among the greatest in the world at 1,800 gallons per year. Aquaculture is becoming progressively explored by private enterprises with government support. There has been a steady increase in the number of both marine and terrestrial fish farms. The majority of them are concentrated around the Saudi Red Sea coast. This has been very helpful to the shrimp farming sector. Al Rubian, the Saudi Arabian National Shrimp Company, sends the vast majority of its shrimp to the US and Japan from its farm south of Jeddah, which is operated by Saudi hydrologists and marine engineers. The kingdom's fast transition from a wheat importer to a wheat exporter, for example, is widely recognized as a groundbreaking achievement in agriculture. The country's first grain silos were built in 1978, and by 1984, it was able to provide all of its own wheat needs. Wheat exports from Saudi Arabia increased to 30 countries, including China and the former Soviet Union, after average yields in the major producing districts of Tepok, Ha'il, and Kazim reached 3.6 tons per acre. Barley, sorghum, and millet are also grown in large quantities by Saudi Arabia's farmers. Food output, especially wheat, has been drastically cut in recent years for the sake of water conservation. More fruits and vegetables than ever are being harvested in Saudi Arabia because of developments in farming and transportation. The agricultural output of Saudi Arabia is massive and much of it is exported to nearby countries. Watermelons, grapes, citrus fruits, onions, squash and tomatoes are among the country's most extensively cultivated crops. The Al Hikmar Research Station in Jazan situated in the fertile southwest region of Saudi Arabia, is where tropical fruits are grown. Pineapples, pawpaws, bananas, mangoes, and guavas are just a few of the fruits that thrive in the region. The agricultural revolution of the last few decades has allowed for the rapid development of hitherto unimaginable indigenous cuisines. Even while dates aren't seen as a staple item in the same way that they were in the past, they nevertheless play a significant role in the Saudi diet. Approximately 450 different date types yield 500,000 metric tons of dates annually for distribution to people in need. The World Food Program of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization receives thousands of tons of dates every year to aid in the fight against hunger and malnutrition. 
Al Hassa is home to one such manufacturing facility. Many countries have benefited from Saudi Arabia's role as the World Food Program's second largest donor. The government of Saudi Arabia has implemented a variety of programs, including the provision of interest-free loans and technical and support services, which have contributed to the growth of the agricultural industry in recent years. Low-cost water, gasoline and electricity, as well as duty-free imports of raw materials and machinery, have all benefited the agricultural industry. In addition, overseas joint venture partners of Saudi individuals or firms are eligible for a tax break of up to 10 years under the investment legislation in effect from April 2000. Through research and educational initiatives aimed at farmers, the Ministry of Agriculture is the primary government department charged with implementing agricultural policy. The Ministry of Agriculture is responsible for these tasks. Subsidies and interest-free loans are two forms of aid offered by the Saudi Arabian Agricultural Bank. Though the acquisition of wheat, the storage of wheat, the construction of flour mills, and the manufacturing of animal feed, the Grain Silos and Flour Mills Organization was established in 1972 to aid in the development of agriculture in the U.S. Saudi Arabia has spent a large amount of money updating the highways used to convey farm products to urban centers. The government continues to provide assistance to beginning farmers who are making substantial financial investments in diversification and production. That's all for the video today. We will be right back with more. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.